Yay. How are you going? I'm Hi. Ali. Um, and this is Tom. Yay. Likewise. Great. Thanks. Welcome. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> nice How's your one. day? Good. I was just getting my daughter down and I always sort of like drift off a little bit myself for a minute. Oh. <laughs> like re-waking re up a bit. Yeah. Yay. So we've got a few questions for you about um, the show and just wanted to touch base about your work. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tan and I had a quick cup of tea earlier and were sussing out what we were wanting to ask you. And one of the main things that it kept coming back to was um, what is it that drives your practice? Like, is it the structure that you set up for the exhibitions or is it the interaction or the outcome of the, with the people? Right. Um, hmm. I, don't, I don't think I'd like distinguish it so much. So it's, for me, I guess it's more the whole process. Um, but definitely with some hope for, um, I guess, outcomes along the way. And um, I think that creating a structure that then allows for meaningful interaction is kind of the trick and, uh, and the thing that I've been sort of working on for very, various kinds of projects that I've, that I've done, either ones where it's me uh, personally interacting with someone and, and coming up with um, a structure for that to happen in either an individual or a group of people or a set of different people or um, coming up with these more sort of like assignment based things that were <clears throat> a part of what like learning to love you more was all about and classroom assignments and projects I do with students in various places and some circumstances like this that I've done with you guys where I'm sort of giving an assignment to an institution, um, sometimes in, in a place where I've never been to. Um, trying to figure out how to do that in a way that's going to, uh, that's going to give enough structure and direct it in a way that, that, um, that has the uh, experience and the outcome that, I'm, that I guess I'm sort of hoping for, which isn't, isn't a specific one. It's, it, it isn't in, in as far as like, the content of it, but the sort of type of interaction, a sort of um, significant, meaningful kind of interaction, I guess. And especially, I really like, I like uh, when boundaries are sort of crossed between art world and non-art world and people who get to participate and don't participate in those kinds of things and all that sort of stuff. So um, within the work, obviously because you've, um, organized or facilitated this show for us from f afar so mm -hmm. it's more about the inter interaction between say people for you like what I'm trying to say is um, it doesn't bother you that you're not necessarily there <laughs> well I mean you know it'd be nice if I was there mm. but because it just wasn't possible yeah, yeah. Um, then, then you just sort of for me I'm always sort of just dealing with what are the limitations and what are the resources? And so if I can have an interesting experience, then I'll try to set that up for myself. But if I can't, then um, I also like the idea of facilitating that for other people. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's probably, it's like somebody who's into cooking and they like to cook and, and share that with people if they can directly. But they also like the idea of sharing a recipe with someone who they don't have any interaction with and knowing like, oh, they tried this, this soup that I think is really good and they wound up, they did it probably a little differently and there's different ingredients available or whatever, but they, they did it and they liked it too. And there's like a satisfaction. I mean, it's completely different than, than making the soup yourself or, or sharing that with someone. But there is a kind of satisfaction of knowing like, oh, okay, they might have had a similar kind of experience and that it was, it was positive or, you know. So it's kind of like that. I mean, um, it, I, don't, I, I, just, I don't like to set up a situation where I sort of feel like, oh, it's got to be all or nothing. Like, it's always got to be me doing something or whatever. Like, I just, I just um, think in, in broader what use than that. 
in, in all in all sort of ways. Like, you know, the idea of growing up um, or going to college of being told, oh, well, you like art, you've got to pick something. You've got to, like, develop that. You've got to become a painter or you've got to be a photographer or whatever it is. And then you've got to come up with a signature style and then you've got to kind of do that over and over again. That idea just was incredibly unappealing to me. Like, I just didn't want to do it like that. And it's the same with with this kind of work, too. It's just, I don't want to just do the same kind of thing over and over again. I want to, uh, maybe like with a, 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 the general realm of similar things, but I want there to be lots of variation within that also, just to keep it interesting. Um, Harold, do you, I'm a painter, I guess, first, and then I do kind of video work, and which involves people... I guess, which stems from my painting. But I'm interested in... Um, I wonder if you think of people as your medium. I don't really think in terms of a medium. I th I, yeah, I don't, I don't think of it like a medium um, because people are just too... They have too much agency for that. Like, you can't manipulate them the way that you can paint. And, and I don't want to manipulate them the way that I can paint. So... Um, so it's, I mean, it's, it's different. It's, it's more like this kind of hybrid between subject, collaborator, audience, participant. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I shy away from, from saying the medium, the medium thing. Um, for some reason that's always made me feel uncomfortable. But I also, like, I don't really have any kind of medium at this point. Like, I just don't. I don't make art like that anymore. I, I mean, I think it's great for people who, who want to do that and like doing that. It's not like it's a problem that way. I just, and I, in, in the past, I have done those things. I've painted and done lithographs and photography and all, all sorts of things and drawings. I've got, you know, piles of them in here from years ago. But um, now I just, I don't, I don't really have that anymore, the medium stuff. Yeah. So, no, I don't, I don't think of people like that. Was there a moment, because you, I did read somewhere that you um, started out as photography and you spoke about that as moving you outside, <clears throat> excuse me, of the studio anyway. So, you sort of being involved in this idea of the real world. Was there, was there a moment when you sort of disbanded the whole photography thing and sort of had, like, when did your... Um, way of m making or creating work change? Like, was yeah, there a I mean, moment? It, it, was, it was a kind of slow evolution that really, um, if, I, if I'm really looking back on it, I can go back, like, all the way. You know, like, I see, th I see things that are related to, the, to what happened to my practice going back to childhood. Um, because I was always engaged in making art, and I was always interested in collaboration. And I started doing a variety of different kinds of, of art activity pretty early on. And it was partly because I had my friends of the family who were photographers or painters or printmakers or musicians and things like that. And so I was kind of exposed to a lot of that. that. Um, but, but at the same time, I was having, I was having that experience it was appealing to me and like sort of like understanding of what I thought an artist was when I was young, which was very broad and expansive. And then as you start to get educated, as I started to get educated, then like I was saying before, you start to get sort of corralled into um, a place where they're sort of like, well, at least when I was grad when I went to graduate school, they're like, you have to pick one of these majors, and the majors are like medium specific, except for sculpture. You know, is is not so medium specific, but it's still kind of defined. And so I picked photography, even though I was doing, I'd done lots of other things, but I liked photography a lot, and I'd been doing that since I was a teenager. But one of the things that I liked about it was that, yeah, it sort of took me out into the world, and just in, I, I I'm um, like a fairly introverted, sort of reclusive type person. And so, like, sitting around doing drawings by myself was fun, or writing, or reading, or whatever. Like, all of those things kind of came very easy and natural to me. And going out and, like, interacting with people was much
much harder. But I found that when I used a camera and then I walked around, it was like a, a device that gave me sort of license, made me sort of more comfortable in the world. And there was something also about just knowing that that was my intention was to like make photographs. Then I, then, I, then I sort of looked at things differently. I could I would kind of go into this weird zone. It was almost sort of like meditative, engaged with the world. And and so first it was not really with people, or if it was with people, they were sort of more like like incidental, just you know like street photography or whatever. And then um, and then I started like having more interaction or focusing it on friends and family people who I had relationships to already, or using it to form a relationship with somebody. And, uh, and then I started, that, like, that part was going well and was interesting to me, but I didn't know how to then like, get that material to an audience. And so I started just making books, because then I could just hand the book to someone and they could look at it and they'd get like, the whole idea in the book, like because I didn't have access to doing a show oftentimes. Um, and so that, so then it was that was getting me thinking also about this sort of distribution audience, and um, and then, but so that was kind of like pre-graduate school, like at the end of undergraduate or something. I took a couple of years off, and I was making all these books and things. And then when I got into graduate school, then um, then I started putting it together what it was that I was doing or what I wanted to do, and this like frustration with what I was starting to learn about the art world and, and, it, and feeling like it was too exclusive and, and too commercial and all those kinds of things. And, and so then at that point, I started to really explore these, these ideas in a, um, a bigger kind of way. And from there, everything's just kind of kept going from there. So I was like doing that kind of work in graduate school when I was about 24, 25 years old, and now I'm 45. So I've been doing it for me. 20 years, and it's just been the, this uh, continuum from there. But pretty similar basic ideas that were going on at that time that I've just kind of played out and um, added to and you know, since then, and had more opportunity sources. But it hasn't changed, like back then it was like focused very specifically on the neighborhood in Oakland, and now it's, you know, wherever I'm doing work. So, um, that's interesting because we were talking this morning about when you were you were in Australia. Was it a few years ago now? Two thousand and ten, was it? That sounds about right. I went there twice. So I went and did some research the year before, and then I was there in the summer. I guess yeah, that sounds right. Two thousand ten mm. in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I was wondering if the. Well, obviously, I suppose this would make a difference, but the sort of cultural climate or the personalities of the different people, if you found that that's very much influenced, say, working with Americans as opposed to working with Australians as opposed to working with... Has that... Have you have you found any, like, changes or differences or...? I mean, not so much with Australia because Australia basically feels like the United States to me, just with, like, cars driving on the other side of the road and people talking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. um, which is weird. It's like you fly for so long, yeah. and like mm, be in like some place that feels a little bit more different. Yeah, yeah. It's like wow, this could be LA or something like that. <laughs> um, so that didn't that didn't happen so much um, there. I think I've experienced that more. Like like I did a project in China this summer. And there were definitely, I mean, there were language issues. I've dealt with that before, working with translators like in France and Croatia and other places. For some reason, it was more difficult trying to get things to happen in China than almost any place I'd done anything before. And I don't really know what exactly, what to make of all of that. I think it, it was like systemic issues. I, also, I did, like, I did a little project that happened kind of quick with just some a few different people who'd like come to a lecture that I gave. And that went actually really well and it was super direct. And I didn't really have a translator. And I just like went out and did this thing with, with a group of people. And so that worked.